Hey guys, Moan Poberry, and in this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about raising capital. Now, I'm talking mostly about raising capital for deals, for acquisitions, because this is at least my focus and what we're looking to do day to day. Uh, but this process can apply to pretty much whatever you do. If you have existing business, if you have a startup or just an idea, I'm going to focus more on the perspective of someone who's out there buying existing companies. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get to it. If you like this type of content, definitely subscribe, comment below. Let me know if you ever tried to raise capital. I really want to hear your thoughts and uh, let me know if you have any questions, but um, let's, let's start with some of the first few lessons. Now, I don't care what you do. I don't care what business you have. Getting access to more capital, that skill of raising capital is probably one of the most important skills you can ever have. Like the fact that you can have access to money to go and hire more people, advertise more stuff, more of your products. Just you can do pretty much whatever you want. Like as long as you have cash, the only reason for business to shut down is because they have no cash to work with, no working capital. And if you can get and attain the skill of raising capital, you'll just be, I mean, this is in my opinion, probably one of the three most important skills as a business owner, as a CEO of whatever you're doing. Now, many people tell me, hey, if I'll raise capital, I'll have to give up equity, which first of all, isn't true 100% of the time. I'm going to show you there's, we can raise debt or equity. So, I mean, people are afraid to lose equity, but then I remind them, hey, do you prefer to own 100% of nothing or maybe even 20% of companies that make in millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars potentially? In my opinion, don't don't have pride of authorship just because you're thinking, hey, I'm owning 100% of this business. It just it means nothing to own 100% of something that isn't really worth anything. So the fact that you can go out there, raise capital, and own potentially less, so what? You can then have access to more capital. And many times I'm going to talk about it. Access to very very successful people with a lot of experience in the sector which sometimes that alone can give you access to much more success in your business that you could never have done on your own if you never went out there and raised that capital now i, I just gotta say for us when we go out there and raise capital we do this mostly for businesses that we're looking to buy now it doesn't mean that there we raise capital only for businesses for sale i just want to say we don't care if the business is for sale or not we can go out there to pretty much any business and ask if they will be open to sell the business for us. So I just want to emphasize that. And just the fact that, again, yeah, access to capital is one of the most important thing you can do. And there are a few ways for to work with. Let's get to it. I think the biggest main lesson that you should take from this video is the fact that this is numbers game like anything else in life. If you go out there and ask enough people, eventually someone will say yes. And I want to ask you and probably tell you that if you don't have access to the capital that you want right now in order to grow your business, most likely just chances are that you just didn't ask enough people. Because in the end of the day, there are so many, I guess, I'm sorry, I'll have to, I'll, I'll rephrase it. There's so much capital out there, but there's so little good deals. So if you can present your deal in a good way and your deal is really valuable, and you just go out there and ask enough people, you'll have that capital. I mean, there's so much money out there in the world, you're just looking for the right deals at the moment. So yeah, the biggest first tip is just go out there and make enough financial presentations out there. And again, I'm just saying generally financial presentation, obviously it depends on what business you have, how you want to present. Again, if it's a startup, if you're looking for acquisition, it's just a different presentation. But in the end of the day, you need to put yourself out there. You need to show your deal to enough people or institutions for you to get access to that capital. Now, I, I have to tell you that initially, if you never try to raise capital, you'll go out there and it's going to be uncomfortable for you to go out there and ask for money from people that you potentially don't even know. It's going to be uncomfortable, like anything that you do that is new in life. I mean, first time that you go to the gym, which is, I mean, not that scary, it's it's feeling uncomfortable. You're lifting that weight. It's like, what the fuck am I even doing here, right? And same, same going to go here. You're going to go out there, talk to people, and you'll get no's. You'll get tons of no's potentially. So don't be, I mean, it's part of the process. Don't be afraid of it. It's just like every no is a, a, a no towards the yes. It's just, it's part of the process. It's like anything in life you need to, when you learn to walk, you're going to fail a little, a little few times before you walk like, a, like an adult. So I, I just got to emphasize that, guys. It, it doesn't matter what you do. I mean, it's all good. You'll get no's, just get used to it and, and be okay with that. It's part of the process. Now, another really important thing is just consistency. 
I see people go out there and again with anything in life, not just raising capital, they go, they try one, two, three, four times, they didn't get the results that they want and they just give up. And if you're not consistent, there's, there's no way for you to, to get those results. Many times you can talk to potentially 99 people and you get a yes in the 100 person. So, so what? It's still worth it because it's just a matter of you getting to that 100 number just faster. So, and, and you need to be willing to, to do work for that, obviously. You need to be consistent, work hard every day and go other. If you need to raise capital, many times you'll need to fly to meet a person. You'll need to travel, you need to drive there. You need to, I don't know, take the train. It's part of the process, guys. It's, it's part of the work. You need to do work in order to get the results that you want. So don't think that, hey, I'm, I'm going to send five emails to a few random people who never heard about me. They don't know anything about me and they're going to give me one million dollar each. It's, it's not how it works. Like if you if you have capital yourself, you know that it's going to take a lot of really, uh, I guess, legit due diligence work for you to put money out there so for into anything like many people are investing into crypto right now i hope that you do some research on what is even crypto or bitcoin or whatever you're doing before you put that money and the same goes with raising capital for your business or for the acquisition you need to really present yourself right because the person who's looking to put that money he's going to do his due diligence he's going to really learn about you and your project so you got to make sure that you have a good project and yeah, don't be afraid to travel to those places. Don't be afraid to put some work and be consistent. Like I said, like at the beginning, I, I started talking about this thing. Be consistent. If you start, if you tell to yourself, hey, I'm going to raise capital, commit to yourself to at least like the next year. Tell to yourself, I don't care what happens in the next year. I'm going to do every day a little bit of work in order to raise capital. I'm going to do whatever I can, even if, even if I get 350 no's in the next year, I'm still going to do every day a little bit of work in order to get that. And if, even if it means that every day I'll send an email, I'll go meet a person, I'll make a phone call, I'll send my presentation to someone else. You just need to be consistent, talk to enough people and eventually you'll get there. I think one of the most important things for raising capital is you really got to believe in your deal, in your business, in whatever you're looking to raise capital for. If you don't believe in your deal, it just there's no way someone else will believe in your deal you gotta practice it like crazy your presentation i mean try to do what i'm doing right now just talk to a camera and try to present your deal in a way that you know that someone else will look at you eventually and will try to literally um within many times just a few minutes decide if he's going to give you that money or no so you first of all you need to really practice your presentation many many times and secondly yeah just be okay with the fact that it's going to take you time to learn and the fact that you got to really believe in it. And I think the biggest question for you to think with yourself, if you believe in your product or, or business or acquisition enough is ask yourself, are you willing to go out there and ask for money from your family or from your close friends? And if the answer is no, it means that you need to do some work on yourself, on your beliefs, or you don't have good enough deal. So one of them, one of them is, is right. You got to figure out what it is. Because only when you'll be comfortable to pitch your deal to your closest people, then I think that's when you're going to have the biggest realization. And that's when it's going to be really easy to present your deal to someone else, because you'll be really, you'll really understand the fact that and believe the idea that your deal is worthy and it's not you asking for money as much as you giving the opportunity for an investor to put money into your deal. Another really key thing to focus on, and that's why consistency is so important, is that in this space of raising capital, building relationships is, is, is just so key. And many times it, it takes time to build relationships. It's going to take you time to go out there, find a person who potentially can invest in your deal and build a trust between you and him. It's going to take time. It's not like you're going to send an email to a random person and within a day, it's just going to tell you, hey, dude, no worries. I'll send you a million dollars, right? It's just life not, isn't working that way. So it's going to take time. It's going to take time. Many, many, many meetings, in my opinion, it takes uh, in the general, I guess in, in the world in general, to get to know a person for real, you need to know him for like at least a year or two, like really close uh, understanding of that person to really know who you're dealing with. Now, I'm not saying that you, you need to know a person here a year or two, because obviously it's different. It's not like it's a it's not like you're finding a relationship here with someone who's going to leave you with forever because here it's business. There's legal, obviously legal stuff, contracts that you can have to make sure things are okay. But for a person to trust you, many times it's going to take many few months. So like I said, again, 
those relationships takes time that's why consistency again is so so important it's putting the hard work doing your presentations making sure that everything is aligned inside you have the good fundamentals on your deals on yourself on the trust in the deal and then you go out there putting everything out there as as long as you have good fundamentals you'll eventually get those people but be patient another question i i get asked a lot is what do i do if i don't have experience i never had a business before i never raised capital i don't know anything uh, the best thing I can tell you is you need some kind of a dream team. You need people who did it before, who you can go out there to when you talk to financial institution or, on a, or an investor, you can tell them, hey, maybe I personally don't have that experience, that experience, but I have that passion. I have the drive. I have that, that energy, but I have those people behind me who are my back, who are my dream team. And as long as they have the experience and obviously whatever you try to do make sure you have someone with that sector knowledge with the experience in that in that industry make sure you have someone like in our space of acquisition you want someone in that who have the experience in that sector you want someone with experience in doing deals in general and obviously you want people to help you with all the finance side of things legal side of things so that's the kind of dream team that you want to have like me personally right now with our company we're helping people and we are being their dream team so we're looking at many many people who potentially can work with us find deals uh, alongside us and work with us as partners but they use us as their track record or as their as their dream team as their board of advisors and that's something that again and if, if you want to learn more about that i mean feel free to see the details below of how you can potentially be use my team as, as your dream team and partners potentially but if it's us or someone else i don't care i don't give a shit it's just a matter of you going out there and finding someone to you can use as your track record otherwise if you have no experience just no one's going to take you seriously so it's really really important for you another really important thing is, is first impression your first impression is really important especially when you go out there and meet someone you never met before if you raise capital obviously from your friends and family and all that they know you already they trust you as a person now they just need to trust your deal but if you go and talk to someone who you never met before, it's you don't need to sell just your deal, but you need to sell yourself as well. So first imp impression is so key. You need to go out there, dress, you know, just, I mean, dress, okay, you don't need to, in my opinion, you don't need to come with a three-piece suit, three suit and all that. If, that, if it, you don't feel comfortable with it, you do need to be congruent with who you are, but don't come, don't come as, a, as, as a homeless guy, you know, like looking all weird and clumsy and, and and smelly or whatever right just make sure you, you you dress to the part you look professional you need to know how to sell yourself and again it's about believing in yourself and your deal and it just in the end of the day it, it comes down to you thinking hey how much do i want that deal what do i willing to give up in order to get that deal and many times it's, it's giving up especially if it's like your first deal i saw people who who literally gave away 90 percent of their first deal just to have that first deal to have the track record and after doing that first deal, if you have the right dream team, the right board, you can do the first deal with them, get even a small percentage of equity. And again, even if it's five, 10 percent equity in the first deal, do that deal. And as soon as you do that deal with those people, you pretty much have their track record in an instant just because you were surrounded with them in that deal. And you can do the second, third and obviously the other deals on your own. So. I, I, I really want to ask you how much are you willing to give up in order to do those first few deals so make sure in my opinion if you never did if you never raised capital before never did any deal before you don't have access to 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 any income or capital you need to give up whatever you can and it, it's just part of the process that's how you learn that's how you grow everyone who was who is successful that I know did it initially okay so the video so far was most about kind of like the mindset what you need action you need to take so, actions you need to take and all those different things but and now let's talk more about the actual ways to raise capital what different ways we can raise capital where we get the money from basically and again remember if you like this type of content subscribe this video this youtube channel is mostly about how we go out there and buy businesses even if you have not you don't have much experience or capital so if you like this type of content definitely subscribe and yeah let's let's continue so to begin with, there are two main ways for us to raise capital. One of them is debt, one of them is equity. To begin with, debt financing is basically you taking a loan or the business is taking a loan that you need to pay over time. So that's debt financing. 
equity financing, it's the opposite of a loan. It means you don't debt, you don't pay them back over time. You give them shares in the deal. And then over the long run, they basically get paid whatever you get paid as part of their equity. So to begin with, let's let's start with just a few random ways you can raise capital from, which in my opinion, again, it really depends on what type of, what size of capital you need. But there are many different ways. Let's start with just small ones. You can raise like a few thousand dollars very, very quick. So first one is just credit cards. Everyone get them today, right? I mean, little kids can have thousands of dollars in credit cards nowadays if they know how to manage your credit cards. Like I, I saw a video of someone making like, who, get, who have like millions of, of miles or, or millions of dollars in credit and he's like 18. So everyone can have a, a lot of money just from having access to the right credit cards and building his, especially in the US, building his credit and all that over time. So if, uh, if you don't need too much capital, in my opinion, that's one of the best ways. If you know you have a way again to, to get that back, obviously don't just take credit and spend it on, on random uh, cars and, and different uh, things that won't give you anything back. But if you need that for your business and you have ways to eventually get that back, credit cards, I think they're amazing. Second way is what we call FFF is friends, full family, basically. And people underestimate how much they can raise from those people. And again, many people, they don't even ask from those people for money just because they're afraid. They think, hey, they'll think I tried to screw them and all that. I don't want, I don't want to deal with friends and family. But remember, if you have a good deal, if you really believe in it, you give them the opportunity to invest in your deal. You're doing them a favor that you even bring in them that opportunity because someone who have money, who don't know where to put it. I mean, why won't he put it with someone he trusts and believe in? And I mean, if he knows you and he's a good friend, he's going to love the opportunity to help you and to obviously get a nice return back. So friends, fools and family, in my opinion, it's, it's, you can have an amazing opportunity there. Just think about it. If you raise 10 grand from 10 different people, that's $100,000. Now people don't know, and again, this is what this channel is about. If you look at the other videos, but with one hundred thousand dollars, you can buy a million dollar business many times if you know how to leverage the assets of that business and raise some debt financing from the assets, and then you raise equity from your friends. I mean, combine both of them, and you can have amazing business literally just with your friends, fools, and, and families, or FFF as, as we call them. Now with FFF, I think. That one of the most important things that you can do when you're going to present your deal to them, or even just in general, when you present your deal to, to anyone, is put whatever you have as well. So people, obviously, we talk about hey, the fact that you can buy businesses using no money and all that, and start a business with no money. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm to I totally agree on that. But if you go out there and try to raise capital from your friends and all that, and family, I think that you need to show them, hey, look, I also invested part of my money into those deals and i give you the opportunity to invest the rest otherwise and especially even me personally when i'm looking into deals to invest into deals or even to people people themselves and their ideas if they never put their own money i would never invest in them just because why would i put money into them in if they're not willing to pay some kind of pay price to action themselves it's just, there's just no way I will help them if they are not willing to help themselves and risk their own money. Like, why would I risk my own money if they're not willing to risk their own? It just, it just means that they don't believe in that deal enough to bring them that money back. So I think it's crucial. Put your money as well. Even if it's not much, just tell them, hey, look, I don't have much money, but I put whatever I can. Obviously, I'll put the time, my effort, my, my passion, all that, my experience. But if you can show, hey, I also put money I mean, in my opinion, it's, it's a big plus. It just shows that, first of all, you believe in the project. And secondly, you're not asking from someone else to do something that you're not willing to do. Let's move to the next uh, great way to raise capital is from angel investors. So in my opinion, the best way to, to approach them is go out there and first of all, and again, it's everything in life, present yourself and be as part of their group. Be a colleague, don't be someone who's, who's just needing something. And there are tons of networks for angel investors. In my opinion, if you don't, even if you don't have money, at least try to present yourself as an investor as well in those, in those groups. Just tell, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm an investor. I'm investing in businesses as well. And have access to their deal flow. And at the same time, over time, especially when you're looking at deals or looking to raise capital to some of your things, just present your deals to them as well. Tell them, hey, I'm looking at your deals. They're cool. But now see one of my deals and let's see if we can work on them together. Obviously, it's going to take time. You need to build a relationship with those people. 
like I said initially, no one's gonna give you one million dollar if you never heard about you and never heard about your business. That's something that's gonna take time. You need to build rapport. You need to really believe in your project. And in my opinion, again, uh, I really emphasize that in, in this video because it's so important. If you don't believe in your project enough, don't present it to anyone and don't even work on it. Like literally change the project or change your beliefs because it's either something in your head that you need to work on or just the project isn't good enough. Now, the next part of raising capital is talking to all those institutions, like I'm talking private equity, venture capital firms, hedge funds, those, let's say, bigger institutions. Now with them, especially if you're new in this game of raising capital and just doing deals in general, they'll take a large chunk of your equity, especially those people. They don't need access to your deal flow many times. Um, they have their own sources of deal flow. So to begin with, they might take a very, very large chunk of your deals. Again, every institution got their own rules on how they raise capital, who, sorry, who they, who they deploy their capital to. And you just need to go out there, talk to enough institutions to understand what their rules for giving you capital. Uh, but again, if those are some of your first few deals, I mean, give, give some equity, give an, even give majority of the equity just for you to get the experience, for you to be in the game at all. I mean, in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. So yeah, that's, that's that that's space of just hedge funds, private equity firms, venture capital firms. Another source of raising capital is just crowdfunding. And many people don't even, especially in the world of obviously startups and all that, I see many people use uh, crowdfunding and I'm talking uh, sites like Kickstarter, for example. Now, in my opinion, it's so good because if you really know how to present your product, you have literally all you need in those uh, in those sites many times, just a really good video and really good sales presentation. Obviously, the more marketing you have behind you, the better. But those promotions can somewhere go, somewhere, uh, sometimes go viral. So it's it definitely worth trying. I mean, whatever you have, I mean, you don't have nothing to lose. You don't, in my opinion, most of those sites, you don't even need to pay any upfront fee. I know Kickstarter, they only take like a percentage of the rate of the capital that you raise. So it's definitely worth it. I mean, you don't have nothing to lose. Um, obviously, every site got their own rules. Go in and look at their rules. But I mean, crowdfunding is amazing. Many businesses started that way and raised millions of dollars that gave them enough capital to go buy inventory, put the team behind them and then grow like crazy. Now I want to talk more about some, um, let's say, more of the debt uh, financing type things, and especially in the acquisition space. And there are there are tons of different ways we can talk about, like mezzanine and and, and just cash flow lending. And I'm, maybe I'm going to touch on a few of them a little bit, but I just want to talk about the main one, main ones, in, which in my opinion are just the best. So to begin with, I'm just talking. Let's talk receivable financing. So yeah, receivable financing, invoicing financing depends on where you're from and all that. But it's basically a way for you to raise up to 90% of the value of the receivables of the so in, in our space, if you're looking to buy a business, we have receivables on the balance sheet, we can raise up to 90% of those receivables and use them to buy the business or use them to go and have some working capital to help grow the business. Uh, we love that type of, of uh, lending. And what we really like about this uh, way of financing is that we can use the receivables as collateral for the loan. So many times we don't even need to put any personal guarantees or capital ourselves because we just use those assets. They're, used, they're being used as collateral and we just have the capital for have using those, those assets and, and we leverage them. And then it just, it's a great, great source of financing. Obviously, it's only for businesses that are already, already existing uh, that won't work for a startup just because you have no receivables or for uh, someone who is just an idea. Uh, but if you're in the space of acquisitions, uh, it's, it's amazing and we love it. Another thing is uh, just stock and inventory financing. It's really, really similar to receivables. You can raise capital on the, on the inventory and it's less than receivables. It really depends on the quality of the inventory that we have, but we can raise like 40, 50% many times on the, on the quality, on, sorry, on the size of, of uh, inventory. So that's another great source of, of funding as well. Another great way for you uh, or thing for you to check is grant funding. And many times just you going out there, research, um, like literally just go to Google and search grant funding in your industry for your ethnicity many times. There are tons of grant funding out there. If you're a, a student in universities, you can raise capital that way. Like there's so many grant funding opportunities from the government on, or different sources that can give you access to a lot of capital many times. It's just a matter of you sourcing those opportunities and just applying to them. 
Another way to raise capital is cash flow lending, and we can raise sometimes uh, up to two times the cash flow. Um, the problem with cash flow lending is that many times we need to sign personal guarantees, which I guess up to you if you want to do that or not. Um, in my opinion, when you start, if you have nothing to lose, if you have a startup and just an idea and you're a little uh, 20 years old kid, you don't have nothing to lose, you don't have any family, sign whatever you can, do whatever you can to show that you believe in that deal. Obviously, if you're older, you have more assets, you have things to lose, then, then it's up to you and your, your decisions. But you signing personal guarantees many times, again, showing that you care and believe in that deal and showing that if you're willing to risk yourself, the other side many times will be willing to risk more from his side. So it's just a win-win scenario. And just to give you a frame in the space of acquisition, even if you have personal guarantees, many times we have nothing to lose because we can still use the business cash. So for example, if we raise capital, we many times just need to personally guarantee like 50 grand and we can tag that 50 grand from the business cash and just put it aside in like an escrow account for like worst case scenario. So even if you have personal guarantees, it's like many times just for a small amount. So you don't have really much to lose. Really check those details, but don't be really, really against them. You can even insurance um, those guarantees many times. So yeah, just to each, uh, obviously it's just on a deal by deal basis, but uh, definitely personally guaranteeing something, really showing that you believe in the, in the, in the deal, in the project. Few more ways for you to raise capital is just a 401ks or pension funds. You can even use customers or suppliers or JVs to fund your deals. Uh, again, I'm, I'm really talking generics here just because every deal will be different. But don't be against the idea that you can use a supplier in your business and use him as a potential investor in your deal because he got obviously some kind of interest to keep and continue to work with you. So definitely give it a chance. Um, another thing you can do is just bridge loans, get bridge loans, bridge financing or mezzanine financing. Those can be really expensive, but you can really move fast. So if you need money fast, those ways are amazing. Another important with all those ways that we talked about is remember every rate that you're going to get from those financiers or equity investors, it's going to be something you need to negotiate. It's not like there's one fee for everyone, um, but it's just a matter of you going out there, presenting yourself the right way and negotiating the deal. And obviously, if you have a team behind you that have experience, it's going to help you because, I mean, yes, you can do things on your own eventually, but uh, like I heard once, I don't remember who told me that, but yes, you can go and jump from a plane, but wouldn't you rather do it with someone who already did it before? And same goes here, same goes in business or anything in life. In my opinion, it's better just to go out there, have a team behind you that's already did those things that you are looking to do for the first time and just build on their track record and you can do things on your own after the first time that you did it with them even if it means giving equity and majority of it and same goes with the process with every lender you're going to have a different process of how they want you to present their your deal or how you want how they want you to meet them many people it will be in person on phone email so just talk to each of those potential financiers and just figure out what they're looking to do i think another great tip is just ask them for some kind of presentation that worked in the past and just try to literally just copy it because if a presentation worked for them in the past and they gave money for that just try to do something on uh, that is similar to that many angel investors or vc firms private equity firms or vc venture capital firms if they like you they will give you those presentations just for you to copy and do similar things because or especially if there's one partner who really like you he will give you just tell you hey dude do something like that that is really similar to that presentation so that definitely take advantage of that and yeah to to summarize it all comes down to you believing in your deal being consistent go out there present yourself as much as possible and eventually you'll get the money it's just a matter of time obviously effort um, and just doing your due diligence and practice your presentation in a way that just showing hey i know what i'm doing i believe in myself and this deal is the great opportunity you'll, you'll ever have because you're going to get amazing returns. That's the vibe you should have, that, the attitude you should have. And again, remember, if you really have a good deal, you're giving people the chance to invest in your deals. So yeah, I, I really hope you like this video so far, guys. Um, if, you, if you enjoy this type of content, definitely subscribe, comment below. Let me know if you ever tried to raise capital or if you didn't. Let me know in the comments below what are you looking to do first in order to raise capital for your deals. And yeah, like the, like the video, subscribe, let me know what you want me to talk about moving forward and give me any feedback, guys. I like those feedback. I like those emails that I'm getting from you. I know this channel 
we really uh, I'm at a very small phase right now I think we were at around 400 subscribers which is, is amazing in my opinion I mean it's, it's pretty pretty cool to know that 400 people subscribe and said hey I love your content so definitely let me know in the comment below what what you like to hear more about and uh, keep sending me those those great feedbacks I love them so thank you very much and I'll see you soon